So introducing the new React compiler, which has been recently introduced in React Conference 2024 and is currently only available on the React 19, or specifically the React 19 beta. So what's a compiler exactly? I mean, as per Wikipedia in here, in computing, a compiler is a computer program that actually translates computer code written in one programming language, which we call the source language, into another language, which we call in this case, the target language. So as simple as that, it just converts high-level programming code into a low-level programming code. I mean, you can think of it something like this, where it's smooth, awesome, and we all love it. For instance, if you take, for example, this simple C++ code in here, which only does just print out hello world, like original stuff. And if you put it through a compiler, it's actually basically what it's going to output for you. You're going to get this assembly code in here. And this simple assembly code in here is only understood by like the CPU or just very low components of a computer that could actually run that code. Without doing this particular step, the code won't be able to run. So in simpler terms, a compiler is simply for converting high level trash code in here into a very low level optimized code. Now, what about the React compiler exactly? I mean, for instance, if you just take this very simple component in here where you have like the app in here, it takes the value and just renders that value in a paragraph. If you put it through the new React compiler, you're going to get something like this, which is a little bit more complicated. It adds some nuances here and there. And most particularly, look at the caching and memoization that's happening. And that's basically the optimization part of the new React compiler. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So if you go ahead and check out the documentation of the React compiler in here, it tells you that, of course, this is still a work in progress. You can go ahead and check out the compiler working group, which is a GitHub discussion sort of place where all the discussion is going to take place for taking the compiler to the next step. And right now, it's only available on the new React 19 beta. So if you're looking to see the compiler, you've got to actually upgrade to the React 19 beta. And the other very important thing for the compiler to work with your code specifically is your components have to follow the rules of React. So if you jump to the rules of React kind of page in here, you're going to find three most important rules in here or like three headers. First, that components and hooks must be pure. And what you mean by a pure component in this case, actually whenever you pass the same prop to the component or the same state, the component should render the same thing. Basically like pure functions, but from React components perspective. Of course, you can't run like side effects in here. You have to run them outside of the render. Props and state are immutable. Return values and arguments to hooks are immutable and values are immutable after being passed to the GSX. The other one is you never can call component functions directly and you never pass around hooks as regular values. And last but not least, you need to make sure that you call hooks at the top level of your components. You can't do it like conditionally or something. You have to call hooks on the top level and hooks can only be called from React functions. I mean, they are very simple and I believe most of people and most of code out there like React code is going to be following the React rules anyway, because that's what we've been doing for years now, unless you've been just going rogue. So to better understand how the compiler works and what it does exactly, we can go to the React compiler or the React working group or slash the React compiler on GitHub and go to this specific discussion through introduction or introducing React compiler. And if you scroll down a little bit in here, you can, I really highly recommend reading through this like slowly and understand exactly how it works. But the main part in here is actually what does the compiler do? So this is actually what we care about, what, do, what, what this particular compiler is going to do for us and specifically what this compiler is going to introduce into our React component anyway. So most of the time, the compiler is going to be doing memoization. And what I mean by memoization is actually three steps in here. So first, memoization is going to be like allowing you to skipping, cascading, re-rendering of components, which is like, for example, if you have a re-rendering of a parent that causes many other child components in the tree to re-render, even though only the parent has changed, this will be fixed by the compiler. It will also allow you to skip inexpensive calculations from outside the React. For example, if you're calling this specific method in here, expensively process a really large array of objects. I mean, this is very expensive. If you're calling it inside of a component in here, the compiler is going to help you optimize this and memoize this function. So you can only be called or recalled or you call this particular expensive function only when the inputs are changed or only when needed. And another awesome part is actually memoizing dependencies to effects. So something like use effects. So you have any dependency inside of that one. It's going to make sure that works perfectly. And it's going to actually prevent from infinite loop on those specific use effects. 
So of course, the initial reason here, as is stated in this particular discussion, that it's actually mainly focused for improving update performance. So like whenever you do re-rendering in your existing components, it's just gonna fix that a little bit. It's gonna optimize that re-rendering. It's gonna make like useless re-rendering cycles kind of go away. So generally, it's just gonna make React work a little bit better and a little bit more optimized. So of course, usually for us as developers, whenever we try to make something optimized or when we call in a function that is very expensive and we wanna just make sure we call it once, we call or we do something like memoization most of the time. So we use a hook like use memo or the use callback in here to create a callback only once and recreate the callback only when the dependencies are changed. Or maybe if you are wanna like memoize a specific component, you use the react.memo API in here. So these kind of stuff. So from now on, using the compiler, you're no longer gonna need to do any of these. You no longer need to do those manually specifically. You no longer need to do, or go ahead and call the use memo in here for expensive functions or here for your callbacks, or even the react.memo in here for your own components. The compiler is gonna parse your code, go through your code, and check where is the best place to actually insert those in the most optimized way. And yes, it works perfectly. So as I said, I was just going through, through all of this. It's very, very phenomenal. So what about the installation? It's actually very simple, straightforward. So first, you can use this tool in here that was created by the React team, which is you can use npx for running this tool directly from npm registry, and you can just call React's compiler health check, which is gonna actually run this tool throughout your whole code base and tell you if your current React components out of your code base are upgradable or not, or can be compiled using the compiler. So for example, you're gonna get something like this, successfully compiled eight out of nine, and the more the number you get in here, the better. That means if you get in here in 100, that would be a lot better because that means 100 of your components could be compiled by the component or the compiler, that means 100 of your components can be optimized. And they're actually providing you alongside that one an ESLame plugin that's actually warning you whenever you just break one of the rules of React or if there's any issues with your components where the compiler can't understand that. They have an ESLame plugin for this, which I really, really love. And I actually advise us to use this from now on. And for actually running the actual compiler, you have to use Babel for now, because now they are just using Babel for the first implementation. But as far as I can tell through the documentation, they're telling that they're gonna move and actually implement this in Rust maybe, which is gonna make it perfect in terms of performance, of course. But for now in Babel, it works really well. It passes the tree and it does perfect stuff. So simply you can just go npm install Babel plugin React compiler in here, and you can use it whenever Babel is available, basically, if you're running Webpack, Vite, even Next.js, but you gotta make sure you're using Babel for that. So simply if you're using Vite in here, you just go ahead and install that particular plugin, you put it through the configuration in here, plugins React Babel, and it just, you know, put the Babel plugin React compiler in here and whatever configuration you need, and you're good to go. All right, so it's time to go ahead and integrate the compiler into one of our projects and give it a try. So right now we got this simple sort of like e-commerce application in here where you can just, you know, add different products into your cart in here. You can click in here to open or view your cart. And I'm just putting some couple of stuff in here for debugging. For example, this timestamp in here, which just represents the date timestamp in here just for demo purposes. And because our current application in here actually uses context. And as we all know, the current implementation of the React context is very bad. So like that means whenever you're holding state in one of your parent components to use context, for example, we've got products and cart, and I've got this bad context provider, and I'm passing the value of like product, set product, cart, and set cart. And of course, all of these in here are gonna be just put and passed through to all the children, like the products list and the cart itself. So that means whenever anything changes from here, even though the component doesn't need to be re-rendered, of course, for this is for the regular context implementation, everything needs to be re-rendered, which is very bad and very not optimized at all. Now, what we wanna do is actually try to install or actually configure and integrate the React Empire into our code base in here and see if it fixes this context issue and make it optimized. So right now, if you go inside of the product list in here, just to tell you that we're using use context in here to access whatever being passed into the context, and if we scroll down a little bit, you're gonna notice this timestamp I'm putting dates.now, so that means we're gonna get a different value every single time this component re-renders. 
and I'm doing particularly the same thing on the card drawer in here. So if you go to the card drawer, we're using context in here, it just listens for card and product. And if we scroll a little bit down in here, I'm just doing timestamp and date on now. That means whenever this card drawer is re-rendered, we're gonna get a different value every single time. All right, so let's go ahead and see when this re-renders. So if you're trying to go ahead and add to cart, remember this is the product list. Whenever we add to cart, nothing gets updated on the products in here particularly, but the only thing that's gonna be updated is actually the cart. So right now it has only one iPhone X, but if you go ahead and try to add to cart in here, for example, I'm gonna add this Blackberry or Samsung universe, I don't know what it is, but if you click add to cart, you're gonna notice this one changes and this one changes as well. So if you just, you know, add to cart in here, if you notice in here, just keep your eye in here. Um, I can't scroll there, but if you click on this one, it's in here, it just keeps changing. That means we're re-rendering this one, even though we don't need to, because nothing is changing in here. The only part that is actually updating is the cart part. And that's basically the React context issue. So I created a different branch called with React Compiler in here that I integrated the React Compiler using the Babel plugin React Compiler. And I created a different plugin in here. I'm gonna talk about this one in a second. And I also went to and actually run npx React Compiler health check to see if my code base is good enough and how many components are compiled. And it's telling me 11 components out of 11 components are compiled, which makes it super, super good. Of course, I'm not using strict mode, which I highly recommend using that one. All right, so let's try this same thing, but now with the React compiler or the React optimizer, how I like to call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two card in here and just notice to this number specifically if it changes or not. So we go ahead and click on something as Chris in here, it doesn't change, it gets added to the cards. It doesn't change, it doesn't change. The only thing that gets updated is the card itself in here. So that means that there is a lot of memoization going behind the scenes and the React compiler is doing a really, really great job. And the new Bumble plugin in here that I just created is just simply to go ahead and take whatever code that was generated using the compiler, I grab it in here as an output, and I just console log it to see exactly what the compiler is doing. So if I look into the terminal in here, this is basically the output of the compiler. It's adding a lot of rubbish code as we've seen before. So it basically just does a lot of memoization behind the scenes. It tries to optimize your code and tries to eliminate mostly like the unnecessary re-renders. And to better understand how the compiler works and deep dive into the compiler architecture in here, I went to the React Reapers repository in here on GitHub, and you can find this compiler folder. So this is basically the, you know, the compiler source code. So if you go ahead, enter it into the source code in here, you're gonna find like, a, you know, how it runs, the design, development guide, I really, you know, advice to go and three through those. So I took this particular repo in here, I cloned it locally, and this is what I got. So whenever it access the compiler, went to packages, Babel, plugin, React compiler, and this is the heart of the compiler, like where everything is happening. And they've provided a really nice example in here. I tried to add a couple of stuff, but they provided this run React compiler Babel plugin, which basically a function that you give it just a, a source code or you know React code in here, and you give it like a file name, language, flow, or TypeScript. You've got a bunch of options in here for Babel, and this will just go ahead and take whatever React code you've got, and it's gonna generate for you, or compile the code and give you the compiled output, basically. So you can see you know, the difference between the original code and the compiled code. So I did go ahead and create a simple test in here. All I did is actually created this sample code. I put this as a string because I need to pass that as a string. You can put it as a, you know, a file and read the file, but that's a little bit complicated. Just put it as a simple string in here. So this is a very simple component. It gets the value in here. Uh, it does like, oh, get value now, dates.now to get the timestamp. And this is basically the main uh, app components. So it, it have like use state in here for updating a counter. It gets the value from the previous function on top in there. Then it renders the timestamp, the counter, and a button in here, whenever we click on it, we go ahead and increment the counter. So this basically to tell if whenever we increment the counter in here, that means this component particularly, the app components is gonna re-render. So if it re-renders, will this get value gets re-triggered every single time on every single re-render or not? And is it gonna be automatically, magically memoized by the React compiler? So I did pass this into run Babel plugin React Compiler, passing the code, uh, just a sample file name in here, TypeScript or flow, and I'm just going to log out the results so we can all see it. So I'm gonna use PMPX in here, I'm gonna use TS Node because this one is running on TypeScript, so I wanna use the TypeScript version of Node. 
to actually run the TypeScript.types or test.ts. And I'm gonna go ahead and click enter for this one. This will go ahead and grab a TS node for us. And we should see that in a second. And there you go. This is the compile code. Of course, it's gonna output a lot of gibberish in here and metadata stuff. But the important part is the code part in here. And this is the compile code. So here's in here, it added a lot of gibberish stuff. And most importantly, added a lot of stuff in here into the set counter with a lot of optimization. There's just React's memo cast into and on. There's so many awesome stuff going on. I know it's very hard to read this particular code. So what I did, it put this into, you know, an actual file in here. So this is the original code. Screw this in here, if you take a look, get value, up in here, just normal stuff. And this is the generated, bloated, huge code in here that nobody could understand. But I mean, if you just read through this a little bit carefully, you can understand exactly what he's doing and how basically it's optimizing your code. And most important is you actually import this C runtime from the React compiler runtime in here. So that's why you need to make sure you run this on React 19. And it's doing like a lot of caching here, like oh, React memo cache sentinel to know if this timestamp is gonna be cached or not, if it did change, if the dependencies did change particularly. I've got the counter in here. It's doing a lot of stuff on the button click in here. And it's gonna like return the values for you. And I went ahead and actually put the same example we did before with like value timestamp and a counter in here to see if that counter actually changes. And of course, I'm using the React compiler in this particular React project. So whenever I click the React or counter plus plus in here to inc increment the counter, just keep an eye on this one if it changes or not. So if I go ahead and increment this one, like you see this is being incremented from counter uh, three, four, five, but this one is not being touched at all. So yes, it's doing automatic memoization and it's doing it really well. So yeah, I'm very happy to see that React introduced a new compiler for optimization and love optimization and love performance. And I'm really happy to see like React moving from only a library into something a little bit more like a runtime and, you know, making a little bit more official tooling because as we all know, React never made this type of tooling, especially a compiler. But this time is actually doing something really cool. And this compiler, by the way, it has been tested on, like currently it's fully running on Instagram.com and Facebook or Meta actually runs that all the time and it actually makes it work or basically they tested it through the whole infrastructure and the whole product line and they found it actually improved a lot of performance. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're actually excited about the compiler as I am. But anyway, guys, see you hopefully in the next ones.